Hi guys, what's up? Sherry here from No Fuck Skim Crew. How's it going? So this is going to be a Twin Flame reading for September the 23rd until the 30th. Um, I wanted to get the video a little sooner uh, so that I could finish the private readings that I have booked. Um, I also wanted to let you know that I've reached a capacity for private readings. So I won't be accepting any new orders at this time, but I'll open my schedule up again for sure. Um, yeah, so I hope you're all doing well. Love you guys. Thank you for the support. Okay, so I'm going to do the yin-yang spread again. Um, so this will be the feminine energy. I think I'm going to use different decks. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay. Um, so this is John Holland Psychic Tarot, and this one is John Holland Psychic Tarot of the Heart. This one, okay. Um, so this is Call It Baron Reed Enchanted Map. And this is called Baron Reed, um, Wisdom of the Oracle. And this is Fairy by Lenormand. Hmm. Okay, so the O shows Zen. Okay, how many cards do I have? Four, so two more. Um, so I'll just use my cards um, for one more position. And oh, I know Dorian Virtue. I haven't used her for a while. Just use these two. And so I think that's right. Okay. And then I'm just going to pull two cards um, for the center position. Okay. So beginning with the feminine. So this is the feminine, the masculine. Um, this is how she feels about herself. Oh, nice. Oh my God, that is so fucking awesome. The divine feminine. So this is the goddess of love. Look at how the heart chakra is open and she's in this pose of waiting to embrace you. So this is nurturing, loving energy. Um, she's the stargate that births life into the 3D reality. So it's about manifestation. But what I feel here is a very beautiful, grounded energy, a knowing, um, a love of oneself. How does a masculine feel about himself? control. So this is a strength card. Um, this is using love, kindness, and compassion in order to deal with the situation. So he's really trying to find the strength to tame the beast within, to deal with a situation that's in his environment in a very loving, nurturing way. So he's also trying to find courage and strength. So he feels strong like a lion, but it is a gentle love, a persuasive love that is, you know, it transmutes a negative environment into one that is beautiful and peaceful, open. Huh. 
How does the feminine feel about the masculine? Moonlight. So I'll read this to you. intuition allows you to see beyond the mundane, logical and analytical. Follow it. Moonlight beckons. Come and trust your intuition to lead you into places that may not seem logical. Your hunches will be right on target. Resist second guessing yourself, for your alternative perception is especially sharp right now. You can see beyond the surface of things and truly read between the lines. This is a good time to use oracle cards or other systems of divination to gain information. Remember that the language of intuition is a symbolic one. It comes subtly through hunches, a tingling, a clear sound, or an animal or object crossing your path. Spirit is sending you messages to help you now. Success is yours if you follow the signs. So when the feminine thinks about the masculine, there's a sense of not knowing how he feels, you know, um, you can never really truly know how another person feels, there's that barrier of communication, um, you know, the language, you know, human language can only say so much, and never really, uh, you can never really truly express your emotions, your feelings, so what I'm feeling here is she's using her intuition, her intuitive ability, her psychic ability to guide her in terms of how she feels the masculine. Do you know what I mean? She, she feels connected to him in the 5D and she knows deep down inside that um, he is her true love and it's almost a peaceful acceptance that it's okay not to know. You know, she already knows. She doesn't need anybody to tell her. Okay, so how does the masculine feel about the feminine? Flexible. Okay, so the meaning, teachability, open-mindedness, being adaptable without compromise, what's important. The oracle message, a tree's roots are solidly planted in the ground, yet its branches can bend in a hurricane, whereas rigid structures like buildings would come crashing down. Consider how the tree remains supple and secure when everything around it may be in shambles. This is how you need to be now, willing to learn new things, teachable, malleable, yet firmly grounded in who you are. Common sense is important, but so is an open mind. Stay curious, stay open, stay aware. At this time, others will be more flexible with you, too. So the relationship message. In every relationship, it's important to be open to a new experience and learning new things. Letting go of rigidity is what's required right now. You don't always have to be right on time, or sorry, right all the time, do you? It's okay to come to a happy compromise. You can still get your needs met. It's a beautiful day when you meet it halfway. The appearance of this card in a reading could be a signal that you have met someone new who may not be your type but who will turn out to be so special that you can easily release your old ideas about the sort of partner, about what sort of partner is right for you. Be flexible. You'll be happy you made that choice. So the feminine, or sorry, the masculine is asking the feminine to be flexible, to be understanding, to be open. Um, you know, and it's pointing to the fact that the feminine doesn't really know what is happening in the masculine's life. There's a sense of darkness, 
Um, but this is kind of an uplifting card. So, yeah, the masculine sees her, either sees her as being flexible and open or is asking her to be, you know, bend with the wind. Because there seems to be some kind of changes that are occurring in his life. And if you look at the um, twin flame reading, that's, you know, the energy that we're in right now, there was a sense of a wind of change that the masculine was bringing in. And that theme of being flexible and bending with the wind was a very important theme. So how does the feminine feel about the relationship? So this is... Um, innocence, pure innocence. It's childlike. Um, well, um, I'll read the description. That's interesting. I, the first page I opened to was 31, so it's a reverse of the 13. Okay, so innocence. This is the house of purity an action without guile. This is a realm of doing something for the pure joy without a care of result. This is a world devoid of superficiality. So, it is, you know, a child isn't conditioned yet. They are pure spirits. They say what they feel, they do what they like. You know, it's all a learning experience for them. So they are sponges. They absorb energy. And so when the feminine thinks about this connection with her masculine, it brings out this childlike innocence in her. Um, you know, like she feels reborn. So how does the masculine feel about the relationship? So this is structures of um, the 3D world. Well, you know, it's, it's systems of control. So she, he feels that there are blockages, that are, there's barriers, there's walls preventing him from fully um, being with you know, his feminine. So, yeah, it's like, you know, marriage, contracts, uh, legal matters, um, rules, laws, that kind of thing. Um, things that are holding him back. So, what does the feminine fear? The Ten of Cups, Harmony. Are you able to see all the cards? Okay. So the Ten of Cups in the Rider Waite deck is... It's happily ever after. It is this pure feeling of bliss and peace in the home as well as within romantic relationships. It's just, you know, if it's a completion of 10. I was just noticing there's a 10 here. Oh my God, no. so the, that's 19, 19, 8, 4, and 6. So there's, you know, the 19 reduces to 1, so there's a sense of a new beginning, and, he, and the 8 is like a karmic infinity, uh, lessons learned kind of energy. And the three with the feminine is grounded energy. Um, the six is relationships, love. And four is foundation. But the ten is uh, a completion. It's harmony, feeling of... Um, you know, like you've arrived. All right, so 
The experience of resting in the heart in meditation is something that can be grasped, that can't be grasped or forced. It comes naturally as we grow more and more in tune with the rhythm of our own inner silence. The figure on this card reflects the sweetness and delicacy of this experience. The dolphins that emerge from the heart and make an arc towards the third eye reflect the playfulness and intelligence that comes when we are able to connect with the heart and move into the world of, from there. Let yourself be softer and more receptive now because an inexpressible joy is waiting for you just around the corner. Nobody else can point it out to you and when you find it you won't be able to find the words to express it to others, but it's there, deep within your heart, ripe and ready to be discovered. Oh my God, my heart chakra just like exploded just now. So, you know, be open to the experience. Um, and, you know, it kind of harkens back to that fear of not knowing what's happening. Um, just... You know, and this is in her fear position, right? So it's like she fears that she won't feel this, this ultimate peace, this harmony within herself. But I think it's a clear message from Source that you, you're already there. You already feel that because I did it just now. Okay, so um, what is the masculine fear? The moon card. So there's mirroring happening here. So this is past lives. Oh, wow, and I opened it right to the page. Okay. The child can become conscious only if in his past life he has meditated enough, has energy to fight with the darkness that death brings. And I just want to stop it there for a moment because um, in the Divine Masculine reading that I just did, there's a sense that he's fighting darkness. Um, you know, the sun was in the corner and then there was all this fire energy uh, on the other side. There was two cornerstone cards that had this fiery energy to it and it was kind of consuming the darkness in the reading. So if you haven't checked that out, please do. And also subscribe. What the heck? I'm getting all these views, guys. Where's the subs? Um, I don't get to see your messages right off the bat. Um, I only see messages that come from the sub, so um, please do comment, but also um, hit the subscribe button. So anyway, there is a discontinuity. Ha ha, I said it. Um, okay. <laughs> I wasn't able to say continuity for a really long time. My God, I totally just graduated just now. All right, this darkness, this unconsciousness creates the discontinuity. The East has been working hard to penetrate these barriers, and 10,000 years' work has not been in vain. Everybody can penetrate to the past life, or many past lives, but, but for that, you have to go deeper into your meditation for two reasons. Unless you go deeper, you cannot find the door to another life. Secondly, you have to be deeper in meditation because... If you find the door of another life, a flood of events will come into mind. It is hard enough even to carry one life. So there's this sense of restrictions, boundaries, um, and fear kind of consuming him. You know, it's like these past lives, these people are whispering in his ears, telling him that there's it can't be done. There's just too many barriers to to fight against so masculines clear that energy um, these are just stories they're not real you know you're asking the feminine to be resilient to bend to um, be open and what you're projecting is something entirely different. This not knowing, this, you know, um, it's like you, you know, this is in your fear position, so you fear this projection of people kind of attacking you. 
um, feeling like, um, you know, the wounded warrior. But you believe those stories if you so choose. You can lock your, yourself in that prison if you desire, or you can set yourself free. That's why the feminine needs to be in this energy. You know, it's she, what I'm sensing here is she's absorbing the fear. She's transmuting the fear into innocence. Okay, so um, what what is a feminine like? What would she? What does she want? So that's pretty obvious. So this is Dorothy, Wizard of Oz. She wants to go home. She wants to return to Kansas. She there's a feeling of confusion. And you know she knows what she wants, but she doesn't know how to get there. So she's trying to find her yellow brick road. And the message to this card is to follow your heart. The Ten of Cups is ultimate bliss, cups, love, emotions. Allow that energy to flow through you. Just like the Divine Feminine, the Empress, the Goddess of Love. Okay, so what does a masculine want? Oh, it's beautiful. It's the same card. He wants to be kind and compassionate. He wants to change his environment from this, you know, to this. He doesn't want to feel like the bad guy, like he he did something wrong he wants to be understood so what i'm feeling here is the masculine wants the feminine to mirror him in this energy or help him you know to pull this energy out of him so that he can, um, you know, pulling him out of the darkness. What I feel is the darkness is trying to consume him. Fear is taking over. The moon is the shadow side, the dark night of the soul. It is ultimate fear of not knowing. So what will be the star? Oh, that's beautiful. This is your wishes coming true. A dream come true, believe in yourself, the end of a difficult situation. So it is the end to that darkness. You know, the stars come out and light your way. You are the star in the sky. You are that guiding light. Should I read it? Yeah, what the heck. Now is the time to have great faith and hope. The star, oh yeah, this is the hope card. The star shines in the heavens as inspiration and as an affirmation sign, or sorry, an affirmative sign to you that your plans can be viewed with enthusiasm and confidence. If you've been experiencing challenges, you can rest assured that your difficulties will quickly fade into the past. This is the light at the end of the tunnel, and it's your star uh, you can make a wish upon. The most important element for your success is believing in yourself. 
um, Archangel Joseph, Joseph, Jophiel can help you see how beautiful this moment in your life is. Feel inspired to make long-term plans and know that you'll be successful. A dream come true, renewed purpose, following your intuition, faith in yourself. And what I'm noticing here is how the feminine is pouring out water and the water is balanced. Um, there's a sense of harmony and peace. So the star card means that the worst is over. You can rest now and heal yourself. So that's what will be your wishes coming true. What will be for the masculine? Knight of Gabriel. Confident, enthusiastic, courageous. Oh, that's beautiful. Charismatic. Time to take action. Great passion for a cause. Instinctively knowing just what to do. So he's taking action, obviously. So here he's struggling, struggling with strength and courage. These two cards. You know, trying to find that courage within himself to overcome his fears and to knock down those walls. So, yeah, um, let me read that to you. So the Knight of Wands is a blast forward and it has to do with spirituality. So this is a pursuit not only of, you know, fulfilling your life purpose, your higher calling, but um, going after the thing that makes you feel passionate. You know, it's creative urges as well. Pursuing a dream. It's time to take action. The situation needs your full and undivided focus and quick attention. Fortunately, you probably can't wait to get started. Um, think things through thoroughly and then act with speed and certainty. You will instinctively know what direction to move because you feel such great passion for the cause. So if it's a person, someone who has immense self-confidence, oh, that's awesome, way to go guys, and is always ready for the next adventure. A person who is loyal and generous of spirit courageous, enthusiastic, charismatic, impulsive. So the ad additional meaning of this card, a volunteer, an athlete, passion for life, and single-mindedness. So he makes this decision. He finds courage and strength um, to move forward. And it's a very sudden, explos explosive kind of movement. And I think I remember something about an explosion of of energy in the masculine reading as well. Okay, so for the feminine, uh, the message from the universe is stranded. Okay, for the solita solitary seafarer, the time has come to weep, longing, empty, yearning for her dreams, dreamt dark and deep. Forlornly lamenting, she aches to close the gap she keeps, remembering a loved one as she's drifting off to sleep, slipping into nothing, an oaken gnarled embrace, listlessly awaiting the sun's lustrous face, alone on an island, swiftly shrinking space. She is stranded alone, afraid, and in disgrace. Oh my god, that, that actually was kind of painful to read. So I'm really feeling the feminine's pain right now. You know, it's feeling alone, feeling disconnected, feeling um, stranded. But it, that's only real if you choose to believe it's real. You guys are mirroring each other in a lot of ways. Okay, so it says, alone and stuck in, in a gnarled tree on a deserted island, a melancholy mermaid stares into the distance, oblivious to the sunset rising behind her. 
She is pale and lost in reverie. She is isolated and lonely, but why? Stop isolating yourself. You may feel deserted, but it's a self-imposed isolation. Oh my God. Huh. There's a pretty big synchronicity with that right there. Um, you know, yes, I have a lot of readings, but I also do f feel that I need to isolate myself a little bit. And this whole side of the reading is totally resonating with me. I feel myself retreating, closing off because of the fact that I feel that I'm absorbing a lot of the energy that's being projected out right now. The energy is very heavy and it's still in that heavy state. Uh, so my instincts are telling me to retreat and to focus on myself. Um, you know, it kind of harkens back to the energy that we're feeling right now, the reading that I just did for the twin, uh, the Divine Feminine, um, you know, retreating and looking after herself. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm following my own advice. So I love doing this. I, you know, it gives me a lot of pleasure, but there comes a point when you feel that you, um, you can't continue to focus on that one thing so much anymore. Um, I, you know, I love the community. I love the twin flame love and the dynamic of it, but to be thinking about that constantly, you know, 24 seven can be a bit much. So that's my, my self love act is to get this video out to you soon. So, um, you know, you have a chance to, to watch it and absorb it, but also so that I could catch up on the readings that I'm doing, but also so that I can find some solitude and some stillness because I'm finding that I'm not able to see the forest for the trees. The message is getting a little, you know, jumbled. Um, so I'm doing it to find clarity. So, um, stop isolating yourself. You may feel, didn't I, I, wait a minute, did I read this already? Oh, okay. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, guys. There is that ADHD right there. Okay. You may feel deserted, but it's self-imposed isolation. What you see as rejection is all in your mind. Others are not avoiding you. You are avoiding them, preemptively preventing them from rejecting you. It's not healthy to avoid relationships and interactions for fear of losing a loved one or becoming embarrassed. It's time to step off the island you have created for yourself and join the rest of society. Make contact with a friend you have been avoiding. Go back to classes and meetings you've bowed out of and wisely invest in new modes of communication so you can talk once again with the world. The world is waiting for you. It's up to you to take the first step. So it's a cautionary tale of, you know, don't, you know, take that time to withdraw if you need to, but don't isolate yourself. And I mean, there was a, there was an urge for me to do that, no doubt, but um, I recognized it right away. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, clouding my, my vision. Like I said, can't see the forest for the trees. <clears throat> so 25. So this is a message from the universe for the masculine. So mermaid picking lotus blossoms. Dreams of purest, <clears throat> sorry, purest perfection power to exist in the light. Will I live in the world I imagine or dwell in my own endless night? Or a sanctuary waiting, destined to be my abode? Will I catch the wild fever of wanderlust and journey down curious roads? No matter which path I will walk down, whatever I find I must pay. However pain is required of me, my gods know that I'm on my way. So this is kind of reminding me of a reading that I've done in the past and I was really you know, the feminine got this card. You know, there was this deep knowing inside of her that was keeping her grounded, keeping her um, in an, a space of unconditional love. So it's, you know, the masculine is kind of in that energy right now, but it's like he's trying to um, absorb this energy 
with the strength cards, I think, in order to to go on an adventure, to move forward as a Knight of Wands. So a lovely golden-haired mermaid sits upright in a pond covered with lily pads. She thoughtfully seeks out and selects a lotus blossom. A contemplative look is on, upon her face. She is on a quest of faith, a quest of spiritual nature. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. So the meaning, you're seeking spiritual perfection. You are surrounded by options, mental, material, emotional, and spiritual. Now is a time to focus your energy and select a path to search for spiritual perfection. Take your time and find the direction that is appropriate for you. Experiment with new methods of communing with nature or your higher power through yoga, meditation, or religious study. Find a group who is seeking just as you are and who shares your ambitions. This is a time to move forward with an open mind and curious heart. Do not prejudge the path others are on. Attend a service with a family member or a friend of a different faith. Read spiritual texts that are unfamiliar to you and take the time to experiment with a walk um, and walk into new territories. You never know where your new path may lead you. So the you know, source or spirit, whatever you want to call it, is asking you to take that leap of faith, to, to just adventure out and experience life. Um, that song, um, Warning by Incubus, just came to mind. So, you know, it's like, don't let your life pass you by. So what I feel here is like a spiritual expansion, especially with that Knight of Wands as an outcome. So he's being flexible. He's, you know, there's con um, conditioning, rules, constrictions that are whispering in his ear but yet he's still trying to find that balance and that courage and that strength to move forward, which he does. It's like there's a calling. There's something calling him. Okay, so I hope this helped, guys. I love you much. Peace.